Hello, I'm the Vlogta, and this is Vlogta Who. This is the channel where we will be embarking upon a great journey through time and space. The date of this video's release is the 23rd of November 2022, and it marks the 59th anniversary of the hit long-running science fiction television programme, Doctor Who. <laughs> It doesn't need an introduction, especially not from the likes of me. If you're watching this video, you are probably already well versed with the tales and travels of the Time Lord known as the Doctor. It is a magnificent monolith of a show that has captured the hearts and minds of generation after generation. And I am one of those people that have been enchanted by the stories of the Doctor since pretty much before I can remember. I've been wanting to watch all of Doctor Who from the very beginning up to the most recent episodes for a very long time now. I am fairly well versed when it comes to classic Doctor Who. I am by no means an expert, but I am an enthusiast for classic Who, shall we say, and I've seen a good deal of it as well as uh, you know, no, I don't think anyone can say they've seen all of it. Uh, there's only a few people that can say they've seen all of it. Uh, those that were alive in 1963 and have not missed an episode since. And I'm, they are out there. <laughs> they are out there, uh, those Time Lords that walk among us. That is the reason that I'm posting this video, to hold me to the mark, in the words of uh, the Twelfth Doctor. Uh, I'm making this video as a promise. A promise that from this day until this day in a year's time, I will be continually watching Doctor Who. I'm going to vlog the entire experience of watching Doctor Who from beginning until the most recent episodes. All the way back to 1963 with Anne and Earthly Child, all the way forward to the most recent episode that aired only a month or so ago, The Power of the Doctor. This is by no means going to be a comprehensive guide to every single episode of Doctor Who. This is really going to be about exploring the journey that I will be undergoing in watching all of Doctor Who. And I'm going to take particular care to reference the Who story, which I've decided to call it, that runs throughout the show. There are plenty of videos that will be able to give you amazing in-depth behind the scenes looks into each other episode of Doctor Who or lots of episodes of Doctor Who at least. But one thing that I really look forward to doing is examining Doctor Who as one big story, the Who story, a uh, history Who story. It's a little thing that I came up with, hope you like it. I'm going to be exploring running themes that exists throughout the show from the very beginning to its most recent iteration. I'm going to emphasise the canon of the show when we begin to learn more about the Daleks, the Time Lords, when we begin to learn more about the Doctor as a character himself and of the lore behind his character and the lore behind that magnificent machine that he uses to pilot through time and space, the TARDIS. I'm going to discuss the relationships between the Doctor and his many companions. I'm going to discuss the relationships between the various companions that meet on their adventures with the Time Lord. Effectively, I'm going to be enjoying Doctor Who as one long, uninterrupted story. And I invite you to join me. I'm going to do my best to make these videos snappy. I understand that this is going to be quite a large undertaking. I'm not going to film an episode of this. <laughs> I'm not going to do an episode of Log to Who for every episode of Doctor Who because that would take a considerable amount of time. I think at last count there is something like 870... I looked this up earlier. 871 episodes of Doctor Who currently. So I won't be making 871 episodes of Vlog 2 for my sanity as well as yours. I'm going to focus on story arcs. I'm going to focus on serials. So for example, I will explore the Daleks in an episode. For example, the story of the Daleks. I will explore multi-episode serials as, as one episode of Vlog 2 probably. 
I'm doing this as an experiment, if anything, to see what I find. I'm really excited to see the patterns that are going to emerge in the stories. I'm excited to see the changes in the different Doctor's performance as they begin to further inhabit the role. And really, I'm going to enjoy myself celebrating my favourite TV show in the world throughout the entire year in the build-up to the 60th anniversary. I can't believe it, 60 years, how time flies. I wanted to make this episode an introduction to the premise of Vlog to Who, because it's 59 years since this story first aired. I can't help but want to begin by looking at just the very first episode of Doctor Who and an earthly child. Let's take a look. <laughs> First of all, can we acknowledge how terrifying the opening of this show is? Can you imagine being sat there in a dark night in November? Not unlike the dark night in November in which I filmed this. All of a sudden, through the mist, through the fog, through the darkness of that television set, you just see a single policeman walking past a junkyard. It's pretty terrifying. You'll hear, imagine that you hit, you're hearing these sounds that no one has, <laughs> that no one is really used to, the theremin, like you're hearing this theme tune, you're transported immediately to this darkness. You are greeted to the image of 76 Totters Lane. You see the junkyard, or at least you see the gate. The gate opens and you see the TARDIS and wow. Like a lot of really fantastic Doctor Who episodes, this one is very much a mystery. The question that every viewer is wondering is the same question that two teachers are wondering. Who is Susan Foreman? There's all these fantastic little nods to the fact that Susan isn't like anyone else. <laughs> she knows significantly more about science than Ian. She knows significantly more about history than Barbara does. In fact, she gives conflicting information to both the teachers and frankly frustrates them a little bit. Susan Foreman? <laughs> she your problem too? You can imagine that two teachers of that particular era might not take too kindly to being corrected by such a young, precocious girl. It's almost got to the point where I deliberately want to trip her up. Yes. Susan intrigues them and I think that also helps to intrigue the audience. You, you're thinking, what? <laughs> How do you know all of this stuff? Well, of course, most of us understand that already. Uh, most of us are watching this from a point of view that we know why she knows this, because we have seen Doctor Who. But for those watching for the first time, this was a really intriguing hook. How does this child have all of this insane amount of knowledge. You know, she picks up a book entitled The French Revolution and simply says, that's not right. <laughs> like she's just talking to the book. That's wrong. That's wrong. Susan doesn't shy away from being mysterious. In fact, she actively seems to enjoy the idea of things being mysterious. She actually says, I like walking through the dark. It's mysterious. So being the nosy entitled people that they are, Ian and Barbara decide that they can't possibly let this go. They can't possibly let this mystery lie. And they decide, first of all, to offer Susan a lift home. And she refuses because of the fact that she likes walking home in the dark, because of the fact that it's mysterious. Uh, so they decide to follow her home uh, out of concern. Yeah, sure. They're just being nosy. Barbara has this fantastic line. Silly, isn't it? I feel frightened, as if we're about to interfere in something that is best left alone. As a viewer well versed in Who, you are anticipating the discovery that you know they're about to find out, but I imagine as someone watching this for the first time, you're just on the, the edge of your seat, you want to know what's going on. What is up with this girl? Why is she disappearing into the darkness? So the nosy teachers park up and they follow her into the junkyard, and that is where we are introduced to the protagonist of this long-running hit science fiction television show. We are introduced to the Doctor. And what's he doing? Choking to death. <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> 
I don't know why is he coughing. Is he has he been smoking? <laughs> like what's what's the matter with him? <laughs> is he about to regenerate? So ever the renegade and ever the contrarian, the doctor, when approached by the teachers, refuses all knowledge of Susan's location. He begins to argue with them. He tells them that they should follow their instinct. If you both want to make fools of yourselves, I suggest you do what you said you'd do. Go and find a policeman. This is not the doctor that people who are used to modern Doctor Who are used to. This is a completely different man. This is a dangerous man. This is a man that warns you to run to safety when you find him because danger is just around the corner. It is here we get the first introduction to the TARDIS, that iconic design. Well, I mean, it was iconic back then, but it was iconic for a totally different reason because it actually had a functional purpose. It was there to detain people and there for people to rush to if they needed to call for help. So I suppose it was iconic in that regard, but now that shape, that design has a meaning all of its own infinite possibility and endless adventure. Not only do we have the introduction of the TARDIS exterior, but suddenly after hearing Susan's voice from within, the teachers and the doctor go into the TARDIS and we have that transition. And I think it's completely intentional that we've been spending all of this time in the darkness, obviously even more dark considering it's black and white television. I think it was completely intentional that they directed it and shot it in a way where the darkness is almost encroaching upon the characters so that when they step through those doors for the very first time we are stunned even to this day it holds up stunned at the fact that you go from this dingy dark junkyard and suddenly emerge into a vast space of brilliant light. You can hear the ambient hum of advanced technology. That hum is like you're teetering on the edge of possibility. The doctor continues to be scary. It is something, he asks something along the lines of. The point is not whether you understand what is going to happen to you, hmm? He's kind of insinuating that he's not gonna let these people go now that they've discovered the interior of the TARDIS. He warns them that he can't let them go because then they're going to tell people about his ship. And that is when we realise, the audience, as does Barbara and Ian, that we haven't just stumbled into a hidden room. We've stumbled into a hidden transport, a vessel. Have you ever thought what it's like to be wanderers in the fourth dimension? You suddenly start getting all of this exposition from the Doctor. You learn that he and Susan are in fact exiles from another planet. Susan and I are cut off from our own planet without friends or protection. But one day, we shall get back. Yes, one day reoccurring lines. The teachers continue to insist that this is an illusion. Something you begin to take note of with early Doctor Who, early William Hartnell episodes is that the Doctor and Ian and some of the other companions later on down the line, they have kind of an adversarial relationship. I know that free movement in time and space is a scientific dream I don't expect to find solved in a junkyard. <laughs> your arrogance is nearly as great as your ignorance. You They're really there to argue, debate, to uh, stoke the fires of conflict. The Doctor is not the hero of this story, but he very much initiates the story regardless. If you were just to watch this and not have any idea about Doctor Who as a show, you would pretty much put your money on the Doctor being the antagonist of the show, which is really remarkable and really interesting to see all these years later when we see the ups and downs of what the Doctor's character goes through. You can watch in shock, pardon the pun, as the Doctor triggers the TARDIS console to electrocute Ian on purpose. I don't touch it, it's live! <laughs> Ian, what on earth do you think you're doing? Like he fries him, he totally fries him. He waits until he goes, oh, I'm not gonna stop you. I'm not gonna stop you, press any button you like. Ian goes to the pressure button and the Doctor, you discover, has trip to the console to shock anyone who touches it. 
Perhaps that part of the console has isomorphic controls. Susan is imploring the Doctor, please let them go, please let them go. And all of a sudden a struggle erupts and the Doctor and his granddaughter are fighting. <laughs> they are fighting over the console, which causes the Doctor to accidentally trigger the console. And for the first time, we begin to hear that iconic roar, the roar of the TARDIS dematerializing for the very first time. <laughs> Blinking out of existence, we see a frame shot of London, once again surrounded by encroaching darkness, and it begins to fade away and is replaced by that strange vortex effect that we saw at the beginning of the episode. The vortex effect that we are now all familiar with, the one that denotes that the TARDIS is travelling through time and space. The characters and the audience alike are swept up into this adventure. We, like them, are now upon a journey with an unknown destination. Chesterson and Barbara, we discover, are out cold. That it's really funny, there's just this panning shot where you see Ian just splayed out on the floor and Barbara has somehow like immaculately sat herself into a chair to gracefully faint within. And then finally we're left with that iconic shot, that iconic shot of the TARDIS landing in primordial wasteland. A shadowy figure approaching, observing their arrival. And then we are left with the first of what will become many trademark cliffhangers. And there we go. That's the first episode of Doctor Who ever. It's not the first time I've watched this episode. I've seen it a good many times. And every time I can't help but be amazed by how well it holds up. It really does. Which I can't say the same for the episodes that follow, to be honest with you. This episode really is the formula to successful Doctor Who. There's a mystery that's ongoing throughout the episode. There is conflict stoked between our characters. There are great questions that are asked of the Doctor. Fleeting glimpses into his mysterious past. And I can't wait to see how these themes and patterns and stories and character beats evolve as we continue in this journey. So, that's Anne and Earthly Child. Happy anniversary, Doctor Who. This is going to be one incredible year. It's going to be out of this world. I'm the Vlogter. Thanks for watching. <laughs>